Welcome back to Next Level Rides. In today's episode, we're gonna be working on the One Series. We took it out for some data logging. We ended up running into some small issues. I'll insert some clips here. Long story short, the car was running out of fuel or fuel pump, so it's pretty efficient making some good power. This is the data log that uh, we ended up having on the day in question, and yeah, without a doubt, it's losing fuel pressure. We're gonna show you the upgrade that we're gonna be doing today, and uh, yeah, so stay tuned, we're gonna get at it. So Tony got blue balled by the car, finally went out, data logged, Got to nine pounds, it was happy, it was okay. Things were going good. Went to go to map two, bam, low pressure for the fuel. So now we have a Walbro 450 that we're gonna throw in there. Just to go a little bit not as ghetto, we are using the BMP plug and play fittings just to ensure no leaks. Uh, kind of take the ghetto-ness out of it. We're just gonna DIY a pump. Basically this, uh, this fitting, what it's gonna do is it's gonna go right onto the top of the fuel pump here. So it's gonna keep a tight radius, a tight 90 degree radius to a hose. Reason being is we're gonna be retaining not only the factory bucket for the Venturi, but we're gonna be retaining the factory top hat. You can get away sometimes with the hose if it comes off and you make a tight bend or an S or whatever. There's no point doing that. You could end up putting it in, it could crush. So using the BMP fitting is ideal. And we're gonna use this fat boy fuel pump here from it says TI Automotive, but I'm led to believe it's a Walbro. It's made in USA. It smells like freedom. The plan of attack is we're gonna install some freedom into the fuel pump bucket and then let the German, I was gonna say bald horses, but the German Clydesdales? Horse, horses, German horse? Yes, we're gonna let the, the horses free and hopefully make 20 pounds on pump gas with our uh, peasant fuel. We're gonna pull apart the factory fuel pump. Uh, this is just a spare that we had laying around. We still have the factory one in the car. Right here, you can see you have a little bit of flexibility in between. Where it starts getting tight is where it's stuck together. I already popped one. Uh, you're kind of just kind of follow around. As you see it get tight, we're gonna heat it up with a heat gun, apply a little bit of pressure to kind of pull it apart. And that'll allow us to pull this piece out. We're gonna retain this piece. We'll throw it back in afterwards. And then on the inside, we also have kind of a, a centering bracket. Same thing, it's gonna be uh, glued and we'll show you when we get there. Same process, we're just gonna heat it up with a heat gun, pry it out, and then when it comes to reassembly, uh, zip ties are actually really fuel resistant, so we'll just zip tie it back in place. I like how you... Ah, son of a... How the f did I break it with a plastic pry bar? Tony, tensile strength. We got the pump out. I accidentally broke a corner of the actual uh, bucket out. It's not gonna be the end of the world. What I might end up doing is get my sacrificial soldering iron and plastic weld it a little bit. This is gonna be generally high density polyethylene. So although it's strong, it can still break. What I found that helped me quite a bit is heat up where the sides of the fuel pump bracket attach to the bucket here. So as you can see from here, attaches here. And what I did is I took a flathead, I worked it into the corner. So just wiggle it into the corner and then eventually you can start to kind of rock it a bit to where it loosens up. I took a pry tool, I put it inside there. Eventually it will crack and break free. Crack is scary, but uh, it ended up working out pretty good. While Tony uh, rewilds the bucket back together with plastic, we're just taking the old piece off here. So it's kind of like uh, push tabs that you've seen everywhere else. One here, one here, one here. You're gonna get two over and kind of just wiggle the pry tool in there. If my hand stops shaking and gently push it over, then it'll slide on. I'm just gonna slide it all the way to the bottom to make sure we don't have any movement in the pump. So that's all we're gonna do for that. We will put the filter on, snip this so we can plug it back to the factory plugs. 
a couple other things to do still, but this is uh, getting closer to be ready to go right. back in. Taylor was mentioning that when we go to reinstall it, the biggest thing is you're gonna want this to sit as low as possible. Reason being is the factory pump here, or actually if we put it next to this one, you can see where the top of the pump is here, as opposed to the new wall drill. If it doesn't go without saying, we can't have it sitting further up where it would normally be. And uh, this pump is a tiny bit smaller. Now, when you end up getting rid of the factory pump, you get rid of this little venturi thing. We're not completely certain on what it does or uh, the benefits from it, but most of these aftermarket pumps end up getting rid of it. So for this harness, because this pump is dead, we're gonna cut it longer. We're gonna chuck this in the garbage. So because this has a bigger strainer than the factory one, which kind of sat upwards and into the pump, you need to cut this out a little bit to make room for it. It's gonna make it a lot easier to put the pump in. Easy way to do it is kind of take just regular electrical tape. The thickness of the electrical tape is where you're gonna cut. So we're gonna cut along here on the top, down in a bit of a pie to level it out with a small piece at the bottom. We're just gonna cut the thickness of the electrical tape to make it Are we it getting easy. rid of this? Yes, so yeah. just around the outside of this to get rid of it. For those of you that don't know what this is, this is essentially like a one-way. So on the inside, you see that little bit of a grommet. Now what that does is in the event that the bucket is running a bit lower, you're a little bit low on fuel. This will move when the fuel is sloshed to ensure that there's a little bit in the bucket. And then in the event you end up driving a little bit harder, you'll always have a tiny bit of fuel in the bottom. I don't know if Taylor knows what it smells like to be burning electrical tape. So after you listen to Taylor and outline it with electrical tape, listen to Tony who's done this for way too long and peel that off so you don't assault your brain cells with a uh, chemical. After you've cut it and burned your arm from all the molten plastic, this should relatively easily pop out. This would be a bit of a transition in between bucketed and bucketless only because you've actually modified the bucket. So you're retaining, I would say, a decent portion of the bucket, but for obvious reasons, so that the strainer fits, we needed to modify it. Last thing we ended up doing was trimming it out, and then we just trimmed a little notch here for the bottom of the fuel pump, where the filter is. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is this little retainer lock nut thing. This will be a bit of a pain. So all we did is we took a five mil socket Give it a little bit of pressure and it'll usually go on to uh, to the nub and give it a little tap and you're good. Now, the way we decided to orientate, as Taylor would say, this pump is there's the three feet here. So the longest one we ended up putting towards this uh, portion right there. So when you go to actually wedge it in, you'll put the one foot just underneath. Make sure that the strainer doesn't get caught on anything and then slowly walk the other two ears in. Now the reason we ended up cutting the notch is because when we go to put it in there, that's where the bottom part is gonna sit. When you put it in this little triangle piece, you're gonna wanna work it all the way down because that's what's actually gonna be holding the pump in place. So work it all the way down, and then you'll see that it's gonna sit right in the ridge or right in the notch, and then you're gonna have a stable fuel pump. Next step, I'm gonna use a light so you guys can see it a little bit better, or at least from the inside. You can see the shadow of that post there that's holding the fuel pump. It's right about here. You could use some type of adhesive or epoxy to affix it the way it was prior. What I'm gonna to try to do is I'm gonna to try to drill two little holes so that we can route a zip tie through it, pull it taut, and uh, should be good. We ended up with the drill and zip tie method. So you can see my first failed attempt. Turns out when you end up drilling a hole, you'll end up getting it. But as soon as you try to walk it up, it'll push the whole thing up. We'll move on to a nicer side. So you can slowly or very lightly see the outline of the triangle portion on that side. And same with that. Now the zip ties, they're not gonna be in any, anything's way, but you can see where on the inside, they're gonna end up holding the fuel pump quite taut. We're gonna put this back on top. I believe it goes something like that. We're going to crimp the old connector on. So if you didn't see, 
on the sacrificial pump, we have the factory connector here. Once we get it in there, we will take it for a data log and we will um, show you guys the difference between a big pump and a tired OEM pump. Installing the pump wasn't all that bad. If you've ever replaced a fuel pump in the past or if you have a slight amount of mechanical knowledge, and as long as you um, disconnect the battery, you should be good to go. We had to reinvent the wheel just a hair, so we ended up having to cut the zip ties because they were sticking out a bit too far and just put the zip ties on the inside. I ended up plastic welding the cap back on, so just cut it with a zip tie and redid it. Food for thought, just make sure that the zip ties you use are gonna be strong enough that they're not gonna loosen up over time with a little bit of vibration and you should be good to go. Anytime you end up opening the fuel system, you're gonna to need to prime it. So what I would generally recommend and do on most of my project vehicles is cycle the ignition a couple of times. Two, three times should be enough. You'll generally hear where the fuel pump is starting to push fuel up into the uh, line because you will end up having some air pockets. It will start to sound different. After two or three primes, you should be good to go. Then you can fire it up. It might burp a little bit or hesitate a little bit as it's warming up but it's simply just working out all the air bubbles that you've now induced into the fuel line. We took it out last night for some pulls and some data logs. We're gonna show you the clips right now. As a reminder, here's what the fueling looked like previous on the stock pump. Here's what it looks like with the upgraded Marlboro 450. As you can see, it's gonna have a lot more fuel pressure up top. It's not gonna be dropping off normally. And once we end up dialing it in and have the trims appropriate, we should be good to go to turn it up a little bit more. We're hoping for about 20 pounds on pump gas. And I think this pump's gonna be well within our limits. The car felt pretty good. You can definitely notice with a big Walbro pump, especially getting decent voltage, it's gonna be a bit whiny. Back in the day, you used to call it a whine bro. It's no different with this, even with all the insulation in a BMW. But overall, it felt pretty good, and I'm fairly certain that uh, we're gonna be good to go for now. Could you have gone out and spent three, five, six, seven hundred US on a fuel pump, especially somebody that's already done the work to integrate the bigger pump into a bucket? Sure, but, this is gonna end up increasing the flow a fair bit. With a bucket list system, it does increase flow. So you kind of get rid of the restrictions that you do get with a bucketed system. And on top of it, we did it for a fraction of the cost. Overall, the car is fantastic right now. Again, the fuel supply is gonna be pretty adequate for what we're aiming for, at least this year. I'm sure it'll hit that seven mark. Of course, we'll put it on the lie detector and we'll do that in due time. If you want to upgrade the fuel pump at home and do a bit of a DIY, of course you could change a few things that we ended up doing. I'll include all the links and the parts that we ended up using. So in the event that you wanted to tackle this at home by yourself, you'll have everything at your disposal, all the links, you can purchase it all and you're pretty much good to go. I know I promised you guys a breakdown video of overall costs. To be honest, I've kind of delayed it a bit because me, myself, I don't wanna start seeing all the bills and have it tally up and you see the final number and you realize where the hell did all that money go? But it is coming, I will end up doing it. I'll bring it to you guys and we'll probably include some wastegate clips or pulls or something to keep everyone's attention because just throwing numbers is a little bit boring. Stay tuned, I'm gonna start working on that. And as always, feel free to like and subscribe. We'll see you guys on the next one. Good car. Emma, we're trying to film.
Yeah. Let's do a staring contest. <laughs>